Praise God. Welcome again tonight. Welcome everybody. Uh, let me try. Okay, it works. Uh, welcome to our Friday teaching, Friday service. We stay long in the doctrine of Christ because, because of time, so we cannot, you know, I can teach just to cover the notes, yeah, maybe two, three times or two, three sessions, we can cover them, but sometimes we don't get what we uh, want to learn. I, I cannot deliver to you or share to you. So we just a little bit more to cover about the doctrine of Christ. Um, but I think the longer we stay here, the more we know Jesus, right? The, the longer we stay here, the more we have information and knowledge about Christ. Knowledge is important. Knowledge is powerful because when you know, then you will be set free. You will be delivered. When you know things, you, you know how to go about it. All right. When you know a person, then you know how to approach the person. So when you know Christ, you have knowledge about him and all. It's easy for you to relate to Jesus and to walk with him. And also your faith in him will increase to trust him and to believe in him. All right? Because you have now information. You have now knowledge, knowledge of the word, knowledge of the truth, who Jesus is. So we have talked about all the, the things that we have gone through now we are talking about um, the deity of Christ the humanity of Christ you know and um, you can go back to the uh, video in YouTube and you can do some revision there or to listen again I do listen to my teaching also after I teach I do listen because I need to review so I listen to my sermon I listen to my Friday teaching all right so just open it like that uh, it, it helps to make you to be reminded of the word. Some of the verses, the terms, the theological terms, all the technical terms. So it helps you. So when you be reminded of this, uh, you go through again, listen, it helps you to grow in the Lord. Amen. All right. Yeah. For example, your handphone, right? When uh, the first time you uh, buy your handphone, you struggle because there's a lot of features that you don't know how to it works, but then every day you play with it, you play with it, you play with it. Now, even you close your eyes, you can operate the handphone, right? Uh, without looking, some they type also without looking, they can type, you know, uh, on their handphone there. It's like that. So you need to make yourself to repeatedly listen, or reading, all right, listening and watching those videos. Uh, listen to the word, uh, read your Bible also the same way. Keep on repeating and repeating because it will help you. It really will help you, all right, to grow in the Lord and in his knowledge. So tonight, we look at the, um, some of the attributes of Christ, why he is deity, why he is God. So there's a lot of things that we talk about, you know, about his deity, Christ, uh, he is equal with the Father and the Holy Spirit. He is the Son of God. He is uh, human and divine. All right? uh, Jesus came as a man. He took on the nature of man. But he is fully God and fully man. That is Jesus. That is Jesus. So today we talk about divine worship given unto him as deity. Why? Because... Many people, they cannot comprehend in their mind, how can Jesus as a man uh, become God? Now, he, he did not become God. He is God that came and take the form of a man, right? The nature of man. He is God. He did not become God. I know some men in the world, they want to become God and they become God, but today they are no more. He's not God, but Jesus lives forever. He is everlasting. He is immutable, unchangeable. All right? He lives forever. Uh, that is Jesus. And he is the one that we will meet. He is the one that will judge us. He is the one that will stand before him. And he will reward us. If you live for Christ, if you are faithful with him, he will reward you. But if you don't live for him, if you don't believe in him, then when you stand before him, you will receive judgment. That's the difference for the believers who believe Christ. 
when they stand before the judgment seat of Christ, they will receive a reward. But for the unbelievers and those who don't live for him, when they stand before him, they will receive judgment. They're, they're two different things. Two different things, you know. So you need to choose whether you, you want to receive a reward or you want to receive judgment. You know, punishment for everlasting uh, destruction, everlasting fire um, in hell. So we need to think about that. And this is not a, uh, what do you call, a fairy tale story. This is not only a historical account that we need to learn or, you know, learn something about this. But this is truth. It's more than historical account. This is truth. This is what we are living for now. Because we have a destiny. I talk about uh, looking unto Jesus. Why? Because of the reward that is set before us. This Sunday I will talk about that reward. The, the incorruptibleness of the reward. Why you need to stay faithful. Why you need to believe in Christ and stay faithful even though life sometimes hard. Some people in different parts of the world because they believe in Christ. They experience persecution. You know in India, uh, in Pakistan. Uh, just a few days ago, um, you know, the church uh, was attacked and they burned the church. You know, they beat the uh, members and the pastors. They burned them. They break down the churches and all. And I, because they said they pervert the Quran and all of that. But we, we don't know. But the government take actions with those who attack. Uh, almost 100 people of them were arrested you know, to be investigated. So some, some parts of the world, those believers in Christ, they are persecuted. We talk about Nigeria or Africa, Uganda, um, in the third world country, in all a communist country. Um, many Christians are persecuted because of their faith. But the Bible says you need to stay strong. You need to be faithful. Why? Because you have your inheritance. And that is where we look, not here. All right? So apart from this persecution and all of that, in our normal life, in our daily life, we have troubles. We have problems. We have opposition. We, we have disappointments. We have discouragement. You know, all, all forms of discouragement and disappointments that caused by many things. Sometimes relational problems, sometimes family relationship, a breakdown in the family, sometimes friends, sometimes business, work, job, and all of that, organization and all. So we can get discouraged and we can get disappointed. But the Bible says you need to stay faithful. You need to be strong. Be strong. Because this life here is temporal. It, it, it is short. It is short. That's why we need to know who he is. We need to know Jesus. That's why we, we have this study. We have this, you know, sharing of the word. We, we learn. And actually we are putting ourselves there. You are positioning yourself there. Because why? If I tell you, okay, go and read or go and study this, you will never do. You'll never do. Uh, because we are caught up with many things. We are occupied with many things. You will never do. That's why we need to make ourselves to sit, to come to church, to come for Bible study. Uh, like, like a commitment. Okay, uh, I know I'm busy, but Friday is a Bible study. I need to be there. All right, I'm busy, but Sunday is a worship day. I need to be there. So at least you take two days in a week. In all your business, you take two days and some churches, they have a lot of program. Almost every day. They have cell group in the weekdays. They have prayer meeting. They have Bible study. All right? They have leadership class. So those who are involved in the ministry, in the leadership, I can with them because you have to be in every meeting. But here, it's not that, I'm not saying that we are lazy but we try to be considerate, all right? So we give a good word. We give this very important teaching. And Sunday, I try my best to prepare something to 
not only to preach, but also to give information and teaching so that we will learn. You grow. All right? You grow. And the most important thing is you grow and you experience transformation in your life. Say amen. So it's important to know Jesus. Why he is what he is. Why he is deity. Why he is in human nature, in human form. We need to understand. Because there's a lot of teachings out there. Sounds Christian. But actually it's not Christian. Many teaching out there sounds so good. I was just talking to somebody. He said, well, Pastor, when they talk, huh, they really talk Bible one. It's Bible. I said, Yala. Everyone also talk about Bible, ma. Jehovah Witness, Mormon, Sinchonji, whatever, Seventh day Adventist, and all of this. They also use Bible. So when they talk, like what they are saying is sounds very true because it's Bible. Okay? But the problem is the interpretation, the application, the doctrine that they carry. Even though we use the same Bible. The devil also used the Bible when he come to Jesus, right? The Bible told Jesus, he said, it is written. Where? In the scripture. Well, Jesus did not say, wow, devil, Satan, that's Bible, huh? I must believe and trust you. <laughs> But it's not. Jesus also said to Satan, it is written. Can? So, don't just listen to somebody say, oh, Bible, Bible, Bible. But then you need to study them, the background. The most important thing is the doctrine that they hold. The doctrine that they carry. Bible is the same. It's Bible. But the doctrine that they carry. And most of this, because it is not biblically sound doctrine, it is erroneous. It is destructive. So, it will make your destination to be in the wrong place. Right? Some people, it, they try to argue as if that they know every. I don't say I know everything, but at least I know now I'm clear, you know, after studying, you know, I, I, I'm, I don't know everything, but at least I know what is the sound doctrine, what is sound doctrine, what is right interpretation. I know it. Okay, so when somebody comes, I know where they come from. So it's important for you to know Jesus. In this lifetime, you need to spend time to know Jesus in your life. Say amen. You can learn everything in this world. You, you want to become a professor? Go ahead. <coughs> you want to become a lawyer? Go ahead. You, be, you want to become a genius? Go ahead. But you need to spend time to know Jesus in your life. Amen. You know, if you go to the cemetery here, or you go to the columbarium, we have all the people who died in the ashes and all of that. You can go around the cemetery and look at all those tombstones and all those, what do you call that? The, oh, huh? What do you call that? The writing there. Uh, there's a name for that in the tombstone. So when you look at them, uh, the name of the person, when he was born, when he died, you know. Actually, when you walk around in the cemetery, in the cemetery you can find the Doctors, lawyers, engineers, great businessmen, wealthy men, rich men, poor men, all right? A man who has built empire. All of them are there in that cemetery, okay? But only a name now. But the question is, where are they now? See? So it's important to know Jesus in our life. Say amen. amen. Uh, I'm sorry, I did not go to my lesson. Now I'm going already. <laughs> I'm preaching this, like Sunday, all right? So a little preaching there. Um, divine worship was given unto him. Why this is important? 
A divine worship was given. Uh, okay, what is that? It's different in my notes. Never mind, I read this one. Divine worship was given to and received by Jesus. Now, a man cannot do that. And there is a reason why Jesus allowed that. And Jesus never refused such worship. The devil come and worship. The demons come and worship. You know, uh, the disciples come and worship. All right? So Jesus never refused such worship. Why? Because he is God. If you read the apostles in the book of Acts, like Peter, James, and John, when after they healed the lame man in Acts chapter 3, then the people came running and, uh, you know, bowed down to them. Was to worship them. He said, hey, why, why you do this thing, you know? It is not because of our power and all of that. So the apostles, they don't want to receive such, such kind of worship. Because they know they are not worthy of that. But Jesus, when people come in worship or demons come in worship, he don't refuse. Why? Because he's God. He knows he's God. Great men of God and angels refuse to be worshipped or accept worship. When the angel came to the mother of Samson, to Manoah and the wife, then they said, what is your name? So that when your word come to pass, we can offer sacrifices to you and all of that. But the angel said, why do you want to know my name? They don't even want to give their name. Why? Because they don't want to be remembered. They don't want to be venerated or to be worshipped. Right? When Moses died, the Bible says God buried him, not people. So until today, they, they do not know, the Jewish people, they do not know where Moses was buried. Because God buried him. Because Why? God knows because Moses was a great prophet. God knows when Moses died and when they buried, they know where his burying or grave is today. The Jew, the Hebrews will worship him. The Israelites will worship him. All right? So angels refuse worship. Um, and great men of God refuse worship. Only self deified. Men, such as Roman emperor, the Roman emperor, accept worship. So you can read that in Acts chapter 10, verse 26, uh, 14, verse 15, and Revelation 22, verse 9. So only men, I said, man wants to become God, you know, so deify, like the emperor, and all of that, like Nebuchadnezzar, wants to be worshipped, erected this great statue to be worshipped, all right? Um, everybody fall down to the statue of Nebuchadnezzar. But that is man self-deified. They make themselves God. So only that kind of person, they accept worship. Uh, but normal people, they won't. Even angels, they don't want to be worshipped. To worship Jesus as God would be a blasphemy and idolatry if he were not Deity. If Jesus is not God, then when he accepts worship, it means that is a blasphemy. All right? That's a blasphemy. For Jesus to accept worship, which uh, alone belonged to God his Father, would have been robbery or blasphemy and idolatry. If that is the case. If that is the case. Okay? So, Jesus is worshipped. To worship Jesus as God, hey, where is this? Uh, wait. Why am I not like that? Okay, uh, he is worshipped by angels. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter one, verse six, Isaiah six, verse one to five, uh, Revelation five, verse twelve to fourteen. Um, the angels worship Jesus. Okay, number two, he is worshipped by men. Matthew eight, verse two. The leper came and fall down and worship Jesus. Uh, and verse 15, all this story of the leper. Uh, 26, verse 17, 
Luke 24, the disciples, when they met him, they fall down and worship him. Acts 1.24, all these verses. Uh, men worship Jesus and Jesus never refused that kind of worship. Number three, he is worshipped by all creatures. Revelation 5 verse 13. All creatures worship the Lamb, the Lamb of God that was slain in Revelation 5. That's why this divine worship is given to him. Number four, he is prayed to as praying to God. So people pray to him, Acts 1, 24 and Acts 7, 59 to 60 during the stoning of Stephen. Uh, Stephen looked up to heaven and he saw Jesus standing there. So he is prayed to, that's why today we pray to Jesus because he's God. Why we do that? Because in the Bible, people have done that. They are they're doing that, right? And Jesus also said, when you pray in my name, anything you ask in my name, right, I will give it to you. Um, number five, he is honored equally with the Father God. John 5, 23, Revelation 1, verse 5 to 6, Hebrews 1, verse 6 to 8. So all these verses, uh, you can read those things. Uh, some, some we will read, if, uh, you know, but because of time, so I skip reading. But all the references is there. So Jesus is honored equally with the Father. Okay. Um, then we move on to E, that is divine claims made by him. Divine claims made by Jesus himself. As deity, divine claim. So we look at this divine claim. What is that? If somebody wants to come in, you need to be alert. Jesus made claims which could only have been made by God. Uh, no man can claim like what Jesus did. Okay? If these claims are not so, then Jesus was either self-deceived or a liar or imposter. That is what the family of Jesus thought. Okay? Well, Jesus was preaching, healing people and all. When Jesus was teaching in one of the house in Mark chapter 3, uh, I think Matthew chapter 6, they, they want to bring Jesus home because they said he is out of his mind. He is uh, beside himself. So even his family thought like that. So, but they don't. They do not understand. Only when Jesus died, resurrected, and all, then the family begin to know and believe. Like Jude, right? Uh, that's why we have the book of Jude in the Bible. He became one of the writer and the apostle. Uh, but when Jesus was alive, sometimes we don't understand. Even us also, our family don't understand. All right. Uh, when I begin to serve the Lord, my family, like they couldn't take it. When I give my life to serve God, my family couldn't take it. Uh, they even distanced themselves and silent, you know. When I come home, like everybody think like, oh, ini orang lain ni, this is stranger. <laughs> even today, when I go back to Lahadatu, Many of my friends, when they see me or I bump into them, they like psh, straight away put a big wall, right? Like very scared to talk to me. Uh, my neighbor, last time we were a good friend when we were small, good friend. But now when I come back to Ladatu, you know, because my father's house and their house is just next door, I say, hey, brother, <laughs> like that only, you know? Like very scared to get close to me because when I get close to me, then I will grab them and convert them. That is what in their thought. <laughs> People don't understand, they don't understand when you, when you have God, when you believe God, when you really receive Jesus in your life. People will not understand. When you answer God's call, when you go into full-time ministry, people will not understand. Your family will not understand. You must have a strong conviction that this is from God. I will serve God, no matter what people say, what people think, no matter what my family say, what uh, my family think, I will serve God. <laughs> because you cannot wait for them to understand. 
If I wait for them to understand, I think until today I will not be in the ministry because I'm still waiting for them to understand. So I have to really stay strong with my conviction that God called me and God wants me to serve him. Because people will never understand. Until today, many of my friends, even my relatives, family members, still they don't understand. They still talk about that. They say, why he go become a pastor? You know, pastor no money one. Better find a job, good salary and all of that. They don't understand. People will not understand. So with Jesus, even his family did not understand. But Jesus made this claim. Number one, he claimed to be one with God. John chapter 10 verse 30. Let's, let's read that a little bit, yeah? John 10, 30. Uh, turn to your Bible. 10 verse 30. Uh, he said, I and my father are one. Um, now we can say that because of the Bible. Uh, we and Jesus is one. We are in Christ. Christ is in us. But for Jesus, he said, I and my father are one. That is very interesting because for the Jew, they cannot receive that. You cannot, as a man, you cannot make yourself to be equal with God. God is so holy. In verse 38, but if I do, though you believe not, though you, though you uh, believe not in, but if I do, though you believe not me, believe the works that you may know and believe that the Father is in me and I in him. So that's why the Jew wants to kill him because he make himself equal with God. Um, John 14, 10, the same thing. Number two, Jesus claimed God as his father. If you claim God as your father means you are God, right? And the Jew cannot accept that. Uh, so he never acknowledged, uh, another thing you need to note, Jesus, he never acknowledged Joseph as his father. You read the gospel, Jesus never acknowledged, never say that Joseph is my father. But Mary, he said, yes, Mary is my mother. But Joseph is not my father because why? Jesus knew that God is his father. It's very important to note that. Number three, he claimed to love God, the, uh, to love as God the Father. Matthew 10, 37, 38. He said, you shall love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And to love your neighbor as yourself. Let's go to Luke 14.26. Luke 14.26. If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife, children, brethren, sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Right. So, Jesus claimed to love as God the Father loves. That's why he died for you. He died on the cross. That is a, a demonstration of God's, of Jesus' love. All right. Number four, he claimed to be the I am. Denoting the external existence. So in the Old Testament, God declares that he is the I am. The I am, the I am. He talked to Moses that he is the I am. The children of Israel, he is the I am. You know, I um, then Jesus used the, ser the same term or the same name, I am. All right. Number five, he claimed divine sonship, making himself God. Uh, John 5, 25. Let's read that, John 5, 25. He said, verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God and they that hear shall live. That is a very interesting statement. Uh, John 11, 4.
When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. So, Jesus made this claim. He made this claim. Divine sonship. Divine sonship. Proverbs 30 verse 4, we have read that the other day. Uh, the Proverbs, the, uh, the writer said, What is his son's name? Uh, can you tell? So interesting, in the Old Testament, the writer, writer of the Proverbs um, mentioned that. Okay? Uh, we, we still have time. Let's go uh, talk about divine relationship spoken of him. Yeah, there's a divine relationship. You know, when you read the Bible, just read the Bible, you will not come across in of all this. But this one, they have uh, put these things to us so we will know what we are talking about. Talk about the uh, divine relationship. The Son is associated with the Father and the Holy Spirit in covenantal relationship, both in the eternity and time. This could not be so unless the Son was divine, co-equal in the God. So it's a divine relation. If Jesus is not God, he cannot be having this relationship with the Father in the Spirit, right? Okay. Number one. In baptism, baptism is administered in the name of the triune God, the Trinity, the Son being centrally involved. Matthew 28, verse 18 to 20, what did Jesus say? Go into all the world, preach the gospel, and all of that. He said, baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Acts 2, 34, 36, the same thing. People received Christ and they were baptized in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Spirit. So that is a divine relationship that speak about Jesus being deity, a divine. The son is, uh, number two, the apostolic benediction uh, involves the eternal Godhead, the son being the revelation of the grace of God, Second Corinthians 13, 14. All right. You want to read that? Let's read that. 2 Corinthians 13, 14. He said, The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. So that is the benediction. Uh, many churches are using that. We also use that when we do benediction uh, that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit will be with us. So um, that is important. So a lot of these scriptures, you can screenshot that or go to the video again in YouTube and you can screenshot all these verses if you want to read all of them that talk about this uh, uh, apostolic benediction or the relationship with uh, Jesus, with the Father and the Holy Spirit in divine relationship. So with these scriptures, all of the scriptures listed, with all these scriptures, it is impossible to deny the deity of Jesus Christ. There's no way you can deny with all this proof, all these scriptures that is written in the Bible, all declare the same thing, all agree with one another. For Jesus to accept such claims, worship, names, works, ascribed or attributed to him, if he were not God, would be utter blasphemy. Utter blasphemy. If he, he was not God. But why Jesus accept all the, those things? Because he is God. He is God. And some people, they cannot comprehend. Even Christians cannot comprehend. Why? Because they don't sit and study. They don't put themselves in Bible study. They don't put themselves in the courses and all that. Praise God for Ethnos here because even though we are few, but we go through all these things. At least you go gone through and you know this information. You can always go back into that or when you read somewhere and you take another course that is talking about this, you already informed and it's easy for you to understand. Say amen. amen. Jesus is indeed deity. That is God manifest in the flesh. So we need to be excited and 
praise God because the God that we know is not only there so far away in our thoughts in our mind he is so far away living there beyond the galaxy but he came into this world he was here before and he is still here today in his presence in the holy spirit and in your hearts and in my heart say amen isn't it wonderful because we believe in christ now the moment you close your eyes you know that he is there as if that you can see him is there is real Now the true believer can only exclaim with Thomas say my lord and my god that is a true believer But the difference with Thomas Thomas Jesus said Thomas because you see me you believe But Jesus said blessed are those who did not see and yet believe and that is you and that is me So we are we we are different than Thomas because Thomas the doubting Thomas said I must see I don't believe what you tell me they said Jesus came you know and we eat with him he asked for fish so we give him broiled fish Allah bohong la you He said I must see then I believe I must see the print of the nails on his hand and his feet and the his sides Then Jesus came. Then show him. Jesus uh, Thomas come and touch put your finger here. Then when Thomas did that he said, "My Lord and my God, <laughs> I believe." <laughs> Jesus said, "Thomas, Thomas. You see and you believe. But blessed are those who never see or did not see." and yet they believe that is you and me jesus was talking about you and me he is the lord and he is god and that is our jesus say amen amen, amen. i think i will stop here because uh, the next week next week we have a uh, next week we talk about the humanity so we finish about the section in the uh, deity of christ Now we go into the section of the humanity of Christ. So when we go through this, though, then you can understand about Jesus more in your life. So we not only talk about his deity, but we also talk about his humanity. Amen. Amen. So you need to really spend time in this life to know Jesus, to study, to learn, not only to read and to know the historical account, but to know him to have relationship with him in your life say amen. amen hallelujah so that you will know him personally that you can worship him you can appreciate your faith you know that is so precious much much precious than gold wow hallelujah come on say hallelujah yeah. thank you lord thank you for your word let's pray father we thank you for your word thank you for jesus we get to know jesus more through the teaching through our session here every friday jesus indeed is god with all the things that we have learned talk about his deity the proof and all the declaration of the scriptures even the claim made by himself yes indeed jesus is the lord and jesus is our god we love you we praise you increase our faith make our faith to become a living faith to believe in you. Thank you Father. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. So let's pray a little bit tonight. Amen. Uh maybe Olive will lead us tonight and uh